This video will be a series of traffic related stories from all over Canada, and the first one takes place in Hinton, Alberta, a town on the outskirts of Edmonton. On May 1st, 2008, a 34-year-old man was on a Honda motorcycle cruising down a stretch of Highway 16 between Hinton and Edson. Well, I shouldn't really say cruising, but more like zooming, because he was traveling at 263 kilometers per hour, more than the takeoff speed for a Boeing 757. That's incredibly fast for a car, let alone a motorcycle, that offers virtually no protection in the event of a crash. For a first-hand perspective, here's how it would look if you were standing still and a motorcycle passed by at that speed. That's something like what a police officer saw when the Honda motorcycle blew past them on the highway, which had a speed limit of 110. The officer attempted to give chase, but since the bike was traveling at the speed of light, they didn't stand a chance. The rider managed to get away, but a few hours later, the same officer spotted the familiar motorcycle in Hinton. The man was given a ticket, and because it was such a serious violation, he had to appear in front of a judge before a fine amount was set. He showed up to Edson Traffic Court, where ultimately the judge gave him two options, pay a fine or lose his license. The fine seemed like the better choice. The amount though was $12,000. That's enough to condemn an average person to Uber rides and buses for life, but it turned out that the man had cash to spare. In a lump sum payment, he shelled out the 12 grand and was able to keep his license, proving that money can get you out of sticky situations. It went down in history as the largest fine to be levied against anyone in Canada. But even at 263 kilometers per hour, the motorcycle madman still isn't the fastest speeder to be caught in the country. On the night of May 9th, 2020, around Burlington, Ontario, an 18-year-old man was driving his dad's Mercedes with a friend in the passenger seat, who was 19. Just from that information alone, you can probably tell where the story is headed. Unfortunately, younger people don't have the best record for being responsible, law-abiding drivers, especially in high-performance cars. And what occurred that night is an example. The two teenagers were on Highway QEW, headed west, when the driver decided to push the Mercedes AMG to its near limit. It was pedaled to the metal when the luxury car started zipping down the road, hitting speeds that aren't even listed on most speedometers. There was an OPP cruiser parked off the highway, and an officer equipped with a radar gun clocked the Mercedes as it went by at the amazing speed of 308 kilometers an hour, over three times the limit of 100. The cruiser immediately toggled its emergency lights and pursued the vehicle. The Mercedes gradually slowed down, and the officer was able to catch up and pull it over. The driver told police that he was comfortable traveling at that speed, and often went to racetracks, but his experience didn't change the law. He was charged with stunt driving, as well as dangerous driving, and if found guilty, he could be fined up to 10 grand, or even sent to jail for 6 months. It was also discovered that the young man only had a G2, which isn't a full driver's license in Ontario. To get a full license, you have to pass a road test that ironically takes place on a highway. Since he's apparently comfortable driving at over 300 km per hour, he should be more than prepared for his highway test, and a matter of fact, he could probably even do it with his eyes closed. But that's just a joke, no one would actually drive on a highway with their eyes closed. Or maybe someone would, and it's actually happened before. The Fast and the Fatigued that was the clever headline to an article about a man who was caught not driving while driving. It may sound confusing, but once I say the word Tesla, it probably starts to make sense. An electric car that can operate itself is nothing short of futuristic, and some people have put their complete trust in the new technology. You might have seen videos that show Tesla owners sleeping in the driver's seat while the car is on autopilot. Usually it's just another video on the internet that gets shared, liked, or at most becomes a news article, and that's it but that's in other countries. This story happened in Canada, a place where milk comes in bags and things are stricter. While the RCMP received a complaint about a car speeding on Highway 2 near Pinoca, a town in central Alberta, a unit responded to the call and parked on the side of the highway, awaiting the speeding Tesla. Eventually, it went right by the officer, traveling at around 150 kilometers per hour in a 100 zone. You can see in this picture taken from the police car's dash cam that no one is visible in the Tesla. That's because the driver and passenger seats were completely reclined, and while artificial intelligence drove the car, two humans were inside, sound asleep. It was a literal rude awakening when their nap was interrupted by flashing police lights and the sound of a siren. The car was pulled over, and the driver, a 20-year-old man named Loren K, was arrested and charged with dangerous driving, and he was also given a speeding ticket. On top of that, his license was suspended for 24 hours due to fatigue. 
If he's found guilty of the charge, then he could have his license suspended for a year and face up to five years in prison. So whether it's a human or AI, it doesn't really matter who or what's operating a vehicle. If the car is speeding, then the police are going to pull it over and issue a penalty. And if you're consciously driving way above the limit, it shouldn't be a surprise if you become the subject of a traffic stop. But what if you're driving just a tiny bit over the limit? That shouldn't be a big deal, right? Well, it seems like some cops don't like that either. In another story coming out of Alberta, this time around the Sturgeon County area, a motorist who was going one kilometer over the speed limit learned the hard way that you should never overtake a police car. On September 16, 2017, a 31-year-old man named Matthew Gagne was driving his Jeep down a two-lane stretch of Highway 28 near the town of Bonacord when he found himself trailing behind a local cruiser. Matthew claims that the cruiser was driving slower than the posted limit, and so he wanted to get around. He saw that the traffic divider line went from a solid yellow to dotted, so it was legal to overtake, and that's what he did, slowly but surely. The maneuver wasn't dangerous, but still, it didn't sit well with the officer, who pulled over the SUV right once it got ahead. It's reported that the first thing the cop said was, that was pretty ballsy of you. The officer then went on to accuse Matthew of disrespecting him, which I'm guessing was referring to his authority, or ego, being reduced as the Jeep passed his patrol car. In a fascinating display of pettiness, the driver was issued a $78 ticket for going exactly one kilometer over the speed limit. What? The officer claimed to have been driving at the exact posted limit of 100 kilometers per hour when Matthew's Jeep gradually crept by at 101. Understandably, the bogus ticket didn't even make it to court. A traffic supervisor from the Sturgeon County Center called Matthew and informed him that the ticket was rescinded due to an error by the issuing officer. The error was the fact that there wasn't any type of radar or laser used to determine Matthew's speed, and it was just estimated by the officer. What? With no records or evidence, the ticket was tossed in the garbage, and the officer who issued it didn't face any form of punitive action. Everyone went their separate ways, and the whole thing was swept under Sturgeon's carpet. When someone gets a brand new car, in most cases, they're overly cautious and drive accordingly. But then again, some people don't. And the more expensive and powerful a car is, the more likely the buyer will be a hoonigan in the first few minutes of ownership. One example is an incident from Vancouver, British Columbia. On June 17, 2019, a wealthy 39-year-old man from Coquitlam had just purchased a supercar that was worth upwards of $250,000. The model was a McLaren 600LT, and I don't need to list the specs, because just by looking at it, you can tell it's fast. He pulled off the lot with a quarter million dollar car, and decided to take it for its first drive on the Trans-Canada Highway. Within minutes of being in the McLaren, the owner's foot was already itching, and he had a need for speed. He pushed the car to 160 km per hour in a 90 zone, and went right by a West Vancouver police car. The driver was pulled over, and that's when it was learned that the man had just bought the car less than 10 minutes prior. Unfortunately, there's no type of warranty when it comes to speeding tickets, and the man was issued one worth $368. In addition to that, the vehicle was impounded for 7 days, but I'm sure the owner has a spare Corolla or something to drive in the meantime. The man was just one of many who have been fined for speeding in Canada, and handing out tickets is daily clockwork for the police. Although not every speeder is caught red-handed. The cops can't be everywhere, and some drivers are what you would call smart speeders. These are the drivers that know the right times and places to speed without being noticed. But then, there's the complete opposite. Drivers who are repeat offenders and continue to receive ticket after ticket, and sometimes it's at the same location. In a recent story from March of 2021, a driver from Ontario developed a grudge against one specific traffic camera. As Toronto and the surrounding areas try to enforce safer driving practices, there were dozens of ASC systems installed throughout the GTA starting in December of 2020. ASC stands for Automated Speed Enforcement, which is essentially a device that measures speed, along with a camera to snag a license plate. These were placed in areas that were deemed safe zones, primarily on residential streets and around schools. One of the locations of these ASCs is on Stanley Avenue in South Etobicoke. In just a few months, nearly 3,000 tickets were issued through the one system alone, not to mention the others. One driver, who wasn't identified, had received 15 tickets in just one month, being nailed by the same camera at the same spot every time. Toronto Mayor John Tory even commented about the seemingly stubborn motorist, saying, I shake my head because it's unbelievable. The tickets were a persistent reminder to obey the rules and be safe. 
but safety isn't all about the driver. The vehicle also plays a role. By law, any car that's on the road must be mechanically fit and meet all safety standards. And that couldn't be said about one car in Ontario. On November 20th, 2020, a man was driving a Ford Edge on Appleby Lane, a long street that cuts through Burlington. A Halton police car was driving by when an officer saw the SUV and noticed that something seemed off about the vehicle. The car wasn't speeding, although it was still pulled over by the curious officer. That's when it was discovered that the driver was using a foldable lawn chair instead of an actual car seat. The car was deemed unfit by the police and the plates were removed before it was towed away on a flatbed. The unidentified man was charged with unsafe operation of a vehicle and driving without a seatbelt. It was surely a bizarre event and pictures from the traffic stop were posted on Halton Police's Twitter page where people shared their thoughts on the driver's makeshift setup. So whether it's from speeding or a car just isn't roadworthy, some drivers could find themselves without a ride. Then they'll have to take the bus that will probably make them miss their cars and crave that feeling of being behind the wheel. That may have been what was going on when a man in Scarborough took a vehicle on a casual joyride. On May 16, 2017, shortly after 4 in the morning, Durham Regional Police received a tip from a man in Ajax who claimed he saw someone he knew driving a TTC bus. The person in question was a 32-year-old man who wasn't an actual TTC driver but was nonetheless driving a bus. A few hours before the tip came in, at around 1.40 a.m., a worker who had finished their shift parked their bus inside a TTC garage located near Birchmount and Danforth. A man snuck onto the property and gained access to a bus, but it's not clear how. I've seen drivers use their feet to manually open the doors before, so that could be it. How he managed to actually start the bus though is another question. The ignition doesn't require a key, but it does take a specific and unique startup procedure that only trained personnel should know how to do. Regardless, the man was able to start up the bus and drive it out of the garage without a hitch. From there, the driver got on Highway 401 and was on a personal express route headed east, and the destination was Whitby. After a 35 kilometer journey, the bus was ditched in a quiet neighborhood near Cochrane Street and Bonacourt Avenue. The large, distinct vehicle stuck out like a sore thumb, so it makes sense that the police were able to find it quickly. Within hours, the bus was recovered, and the suspect was tracked to his house, which was close by, and he was arrested. He was charged with theft and possession of stolen property over 5000 He was later released from custody on a promise to appear in court. The bus wasn't damaged and no one was injured in the joyride, which was fortunate since a TTC spokesperson, Stuart Green, described the bus as being a big, complicated vehicle that's hard to drive. Another spokesperson, Mike Detoma, said it wasn't the first time a company vehicle has been taken for a spin, so it may happen more often than expected. So if you can take anything from this video, it should be that irresponsible driving has consequences. On top of hefty fines and jail time, you could have your license taken away for months, years, or even a lifetime. That's right, in the province of Ontario, a driver's license can be revoked indefinitely, with no possibility of reinstatement. That's the punishment that one seasoned dirty driver was all too familiar with. On October 21st, 2020, a 60 year old man named Timothy Frazier was speeding on Airport Road in Mono, Ontario when an officer flagged him down for a traffic stop. It was discovered that the driver, Timothy, had eight lifetime driving bans and two suspensions under his belt. He was about to add more infractions and offenses to his record because the plates didn't match his car and he also had no insurance. He was charged with operating a vehicle while prohibited, driving while suspended, using an unauthorized plate, and driving without valid insurance. He was given a date to appear in court and was released, to likely continue the cycle he's grown accustomed to. After decades of disobeying the law, it will likely take more than a slap on the wrist to straighten out a rebel like Timothy. In conclusion, don't end up like Timothy, buried in traffic violations and without a license right before his golden years. Driving is a privilege, so don't wait until you're not allowed to drive anymore to realize that. Be safe out there, and thanks for watching. What?